Malaysia holds its breath on who will lead the country, with the post-election stalemate dragging on. The king says the leading coalitions don't have the numbers to form a government and summons more MPs to the palace for tomorrow. A nail-biting anxious few days for Malaysians as they yearn for political clarity. The instability exacerbating the post-pandemic situation with economic recovery on the line. For more, Helmi Haja Maidin, CEO at the Social and Economic Research Initiative, joins us live now for more. Helmi, the uncertainty just continues for Malaysia. Despite that meeting today, no confirmation on who is going to form the government just yet. But Pakatan Harapan's leader, Anwar Ibrahim, he told the media that the king wants a unity government that's inclusive. Now, who, what is uh, going to be the king's priorities now in actually making this decision for tomorrow? He's going to meet uh, BNMPs, but how much longer might it take? I think your guess is as good as mine with regards to how long it's going to take. But I think everyone is very keen for things to end as quickly as possible and in a way that leads to a more stable, unified government. I'm very happy and I think a lot of us on the ground are very happy to hear the King mention key points about how any government has to look after all races, all religions, and all regions in the country, because there have been some concerns about the nature in which some of the campaigns have been put out. So there is a little bit of attention when it comes to racial relationships at the moment. And I think the king's main priority is to ensure that he's not only performing his role as a ruler for the Malays and to protect Malay rights, but in this case, he's obviously performing a very important role of being a king for all Malaysians and ensuring that we have a government that looks after to every one of us. So, help me, but we know Baris and Nacional, uh, they are, they've said that they're adamant they're not going to support either candidate. Uh, that's prevented either Anwar and Muhyiddin from actually reaching a majority. Uh, they want to remain in opposition. But what leverage does that strategy give Baris and Nacional? I think it actually opens up a lot of room for them to maneuver. It gives them a lot of flexibility. And I think it also allows them to perhaps behave in one way in public and not be in danger of perhaps angering their ground support and at the same time be able to make a different decision behind closed doors or when they are even interviewed by the Agom, by the king. So I think it is a clever play because they have to balance out the need and perhaps the temptation to be in government versus the challenges of being in opposition. And this also gives them a little bit more leeway when it comes to being able to perform differently when the public is looking at them versus how they are going to perform when their party elections happen within the next six months. So things are very fluid and what was said yesterday does not appear to hold true today in some cases. And we might have a very different picture come tomorrow morning when the King ends up interviewing all 30 MPs from Barisa National Coalition. Yeah, well, certainly uh, staying in opposition would give them the opportunity to provide that check or balance to any government that gets formed. But the markets, Helmi, they don't like uncertainty. Uh, today, KLSE, uh, it fell for the second day. Uh, significant election gains as well by PAS. Uh, that impacted investor fears too, uh, specifically on policies over gambling, on alcohol consumption. Can Malaysia really afford this prolonged delay. I mean, it will be nearly four days if, if we don't get a decision by tomorrow. Uh, this, this, this delay in deciding who leads the country. You're absolutely right. Um, we've been hit in the bursa. We've been hit in our forex exchange or rather our foreign exchange. And the longer this goes on, the more uncertainty there is. There's going to be more and more of an impact in terms of not just short term, but long term investing as well. And the last thing we want is for things to go back to what's been going on for the past few months where there's uncertainty about policies. I think the government per se may not necessarily be an issue in terms of who ends up being in government, but rather the policy policies that will be introduced and whether or not there is going to be some continuity. I think most investors and most people in Malaysia who are in business or in the corporate scene, what they value most is some form of clarity as to the direction in which we're heading. So as you mentioned, certain sectors like gaming, 
finance, they will want to have a very clear idea of what's going to be introduced by any government that comes into place. And I think the first thing any new prime minister will need to do is to provide that reassurance and to provide some clarity as to the direction in which they'll be going. And once again, they, this may be rather different with regards to what's being said now compared to what was said during campaigning, because there may be some level of emotive and perhaps language that's used to uh, speak to the grassroots that may give us a different impression then during the campaign period versus now when they are actually in government and there's a realization that there has to be a very, very clear, rational and logical way of governing in order to ass uh, assuage not just local domestic investors, but those in the region and across the globe as well. Helmi, thank you very much for that. Helmi Haja Maidin there, CEO of the Social and Economic Research Initiative. While the leadership tussle is playing out, Malaysians are waiting anxiously for clarity on who will lead the country. And as Melissa Gill reports, what they want is for the economy to be vibrant again after badly hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. It's a political chess game that's unfolding at the federal seat of power in Malaysia. And this after the 15th general election on Saturday failed to produce a clear winner and resulted in a hung parliament for the first time in history. Now, Malaysians are hoping for a quick resolution so that the country can move on to revive the economy. Life goes on. Please settle this fast. This all miserable. Actually, all three major coalitions did not have the simple majority needed to form the government. And this despite opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim's Pakatan Harapan coalition bagging the most number of seats. While some felt let down by the system, others are hopeful that the coalition government, whoever that leads, will put the people's first. They have to go forward. Lah. You see how Indonesia is coming and how Malaysia are here now. Please be fair to everyone. Lah. I want a better Malaysia lah. rather than just uh, sitting around the political are playing the game. The riot is suffering now. And once again, they are turning to the palace where the king, Sultan Abdullah Ahmad Shah, will perform its constitutional duty to decide who leads the country based on the statutory declarations that His Majesty received. Sekarang semua dekat tangan Agung kan, so saya harap sangat Agung memilih pemimpin yang layak lah. The deadline for MPs to submit the names has expired and Malaysians are awaiting news from the palace with bated breath. Melissa Goh, CNA, Kuala Lumpur.